Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination. so squeaky well the squeaky chair gets the grease they always <laughs> say <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the After Buzz Podcast. My name is Nico Adjimun, your host of the After Buzz. Hello, I'm Buzz Adams. Yep, and that's Buzz Adams. <laughs> Sorry, my hernia gave me a hiccup right in the middle of that. Your hernia gave you a hiccup. Or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to uh, Thursday. It is July... 25, I think. 25, that is right. And uh, today's episode is actually going to be about stuff... That we're watching. Again, huh? I don't think... I mean, we might... Okay, let me set it up differently. Uh, Right now, I want to talk about an older show. Because we have streaming options, but I think we forget that there was a lot of great television in the past 20 to 30 years. Amazing television. Okay. Do you remember a certain channel called the Sci-Fi Channel? I do. Now, it's spelled S Y. Well, yeah... That's why FY. I think they changed it to it eventually, but they show fantasy and science fiction shows. But they weren't always the best quality, right? They were kind of there. There were some that were like they leaned into the fact that these were low budget and looked like crap. Yes. Yeah, those are great. They're. I awesome. mean, I don't want to watch them, but I want to <laughs> tune in long enough to see. God, like they had a dinosaur one, and the dinosaur is so fun. Janky looking man. Uh, 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 well, uh, maybe you could refresh my memory on some of these. Well, I'm not specifically going to talk about the movies or, oh. you know, in general, you can just go back and uh, look up sci fi uh, mo- made for TV movies. I think they were the ones who brought a Sharknado. They, they might have been. An Octogator. Uh, <clears throat> but specifically, they had a TV show called Warehouse 13. Oh, yeah. You remember this? It was a, kind of an anthology, maybe? Or did it have a central cast? It had or, a central cast. It, but they investigated different anomalous... That is correct. Yeah. Was it good? Uh, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the middle of it right now. Is it good? It's great! Was it kind of like... I felt like, okay, well, this is like a, a basic cable version of X-Files, maybe. Yes! Uh, but I don't know much about it beyond that. Yeah, that's actually an interesting way of putting it. Uh, okay, so the premise is that throughout time and uh, history, there mm. have been artifacts that have been imbued with certain abilities, powers, energies, whatever you want to call Arc it. Ark of the Covenant type of stuff. Yeah, but different things, you know, uh, <clears throat> and they can cause problems. Uh, if they were allowed to be out in the wider world, so like the spear of Longinus, s- stuff like that, exactly. <laughs> so they wait, wait. I mentioned two religious things. Were they were they religious or could they be cursed? Well, okay. So the warehouse thirteen is because warehouse one was started by Alexander the Great to uh, uh, to hold all these gr- these powerful items, protect the wider world from them. The current day, there's warehouse thirteen. So that means there's been thirteen warehouses since. Do we have all the items from warehouses 1 through 12 in this story? No. Uh, like, warehouse 2 was mysteriously mysteriously vanished. It's part of the Atlantis mythos as well. Um, but, for example, uh, here are some of the items that they have. Lewis Carroll's mirror. <laughs> through the looking glass. That could it, actually transport you to an alternate can, It dimension. can trap people inside of it, and oh. it can create a dangerous alternate reality. Okay, good. All right? Uh, Marilyn Monroe's hairbrush. It causes the user's hair to turn platinum blonde and makes them irresistible to others. So, so, so this is about thousands of different items. It is not about... <laughs> Like the spear of Longinus, and how like that's this one great powerful thing. No, no, these are all kinds of different. Marilyn items. Monroe's hairbrush. All right, James Braird's chair. 
who is James Braird? James Braird is the uh, father and inventor of hypnotherapy. I thought that was Mesmer. No. Henri or Louis or possibly Jean-Paul Mesmer. Uh, let me double check. He kind of popularized hypnotherapy. I think he did it more as a party trick than anything uh-huh. else. <laughs> uh, Scottish professional. Uh, no, that can't be him. Huh. Well, there's a famous golfer called James Braird. Franz Mesmer was a German physician with an interest in astronomy. Uh, he came up, we get the we get mesmerism. Another word for hypnosis from Franz Mesmer, who lived in the 1700s and 1800s. No, no, it's not. It's the Scottish doctor James Braird proposed the term hypnotism. Okay. That's the guy I was talking about. Okay. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so his chair has soaked up... Uh, these anyways every every item has uh has this kind of stuff okay Tes, a tesla gun we, they should bring it back do more updated like elon musk's vape pen or something that would be hilarious <laughs> what's interesting though is it was at a time where is this a, like a sneak sneaky history lesson too like you learn about all these yeah people, but it kind of Okay, and yeah. and it's like a, a creature of the month, a creature of the week kind of thing. Like those every episode, were, I preferred those X Files. I do too. The creature of the you know monster of the week, yeah, as yeah. opposed to the main alien mythology. I much preferred the creature features. I, I do week. enjoy yeah. that. Um, and some of the stuff. Okay, so that what's really interesting about the show is it was like made in a transitional era of technology. So like two thousand five, then to two thousand eight. So get this, when they start the show... Three, three seasons? No, it's six or six. five. Uh, I, I, so I didn't give the exact times, but I'm talking about the, the transition period. Okay. In 2005, we had flip phones, right? 2005, we had flip phones. Okay. Flip, flip, flip. Flip, 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 flip phones. Mm-hmm. Flip phones. Sure so one of the devices that they have in the show is called the Farnsworth, which is... Philo T. Farnsworth, the inventor of television? Yes, it's named after him. It's a communication device named after Philo Farnsworth used by the warehouse agents to communicate over long distances. Now, it it's basically a cell phone that we would have today. It's... It, Otherwise known as a communicator from the original Star Trek. Well, this one has a screen that you can look at each other through. And it's an old-timey steampunk kind of screen. Uh, Oh, yes. I can see how steampunk was pretty big in the 2000s. Well, but there was also no video cameras at, in 2005. There was, that was Not on your phone. That right, may be grainy, no, maybe super grainy. Not like this. And it, was, it, it, it looked like uh, one of these bricks, and it had a cover to it and a couple switches here and there. And the reason it was so good is that could, it couldn't be intercepted. Or the, the, it was on a frequency that no other device ever worked on. Anyways, by 2000... Seven, the next two seasons. The gen- the the technology you, had you had have an iPhone right? already, yeah. and it kind of makes it seem a si- like a silly oh. object to have as this. So then they come up with some new storylines about why it's a little bit better. Uh, anyways, I thought it was it, it's super interesting to have this show. Go go and watch the Matrix, which came out in like ninety eight ninety nine, and how antiquated all the all the tech looks. Like I just his saw computer. It. Yeah, his computer's got the big bulky, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, deep yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. It's You're right. it's really interesting. And like he's he's doing floppies, like he's putting the, the small floppies in. Yeah, yeah, right. The three point five inch. I, sure. And, and that, it's just interesting that at, at the time it was like, oh, this, look at all this high tech stuff, and now it just looks antique when you watch them. And the Matrix, the movie holds up. The movie does hold up. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think was the most predictive movie or television show? That really got stuff, a lot of it right. Star Trek has the the communicator the cl- and the clamshell design, which I think Motorola clamshell. Yeah, that's what they call the uh, you know those first Motorolas that came out or okay. the razors. All right, and that's actually the communicator had a flip up thing. And what we supposedly the inventor it, of the yeah. Motorola uh, was inspired by Star Trek, the clamshell. I've heard that a lot of scientists, especially. Uh, astronomers and people in the tech field a lot of those were big star trek fans that's kind of where they got their interest 
Yeah, I'd say that would probably be one of those starting point for a lot of people who who went on to invent some of the stuff. So if it looks like Star Trek, maybe it's not completely coincidental. How about the Simpsons predicting stuff? Uh, I've heard the creators saying that that we're all stupid and that we're just applying retroactively things that are just similar. And it's a it's a form of thematic pareidolia. (laughs) <laughs> where okay, you wow. look back and it's like, oh, the Simpsons made a joke about Cypress Hill performing with the L- with the London Symphony Orchestra. Then someday, 30 years later, Cypress Hill actually does perform right. with the London Symphony Orchestra. It's like, no, that's... They just made so many random jokes, and the joke count per episode is off the charts. Like, how many visual jokes, which is one of the things I still love about the Simpsons. I could go back and watch an episode that I've watched 50 times, and there's always going to be something I didn't catch those first 50 times. Uh, do you want to hear some more of the uh, uh, items that they have? Anyways, the warehouse. Well, you know what's cool about the the show? The warehouse is actually so large. It probably takes up um, 20 football fields, 30, I'm 40. I'm picturing the warehouse where they put the Ark of the Covenant at the it end. It looks of like that. It's yes. it probably inspired by that. Bigger. Yes, yes it yeah, probably is. Big. I mean, just boxes and boxes. It and is. Boxes. It's so big. They have a zip line through the middle of it, and that's how you kind of get from the one point to another, and you just fall off into the uh, middle. See, it predicted Amazon warehouses. <laughs> 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 it's got a zip line, but no restrooms. <laughs> What do you think of, all right, this, Lizzie Borden's compact mirror. Her compact mirror will induce murderous rage in whoever uses it. <laughs> okay. You know, she was acquitted, by the way. <laughs> the real Lizzie Borden was found not guilty. Uh, I don't even really know the story. Did she murder her parents with an axe? She did not. I mean, according to the the uh, adjudication. Is that what she was accused yes. of doing? Lizzie Borden took an axe. Gave her father 40 40 wax. wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her mother 41. (laughs) A very popular rhyme of the the era. Aaron Bird. You can can visit, I think it may even be a and b now, the Lizzie Borden murder house. Uh, Is is it a border house? Because Borden. A Borden? It's a Borden house. No, No, it was, you know, it might be a and b now. Uh, Cleopatra's Necklace grants the wearer immense charisma and the ability to manipulate others. Aaron Burr's treasonous folio. It causes anyone who touches it to become overly paranoid and distrustful. W.C. Fields' juggling balls. When juggled, these balls can control the minds of those who watch. Come over here and juggle my balls. <laughs> Give them a juggle. Beatrice Potter, Beatrix Potter's tea set causes whoever drinks from it to hallucinate. What, who's Beatrix Potter? She wrote Peter Rabbit. Oh, nice. Uh, tea set causes whoever drinks from it to hallucinate and see everything in a cartoonish way. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Matahari spy glasses allows the wearer to see through solid objects. Wow. Rasputin's prayer rope grants the user temporary invulnerability. <laughs> because the story about how he met his end, mm-hmm. apparently they poisoned him, stabbed him, poisoned him again, shot him a couple of times. Gave him poison cakes, and he asked for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, M.C. Escher's skull. It distorts the perception of reality, and it makes all the rooms and surroundings impossible to to. He's pass. the guy who wrote, who who made the like the staircase that's a never ending uh, right, staircase, the messed up scare, yeah, staircases. Right. So. I really encourage anybody who is a fan of... Uh, of uh, would you say if I liked X-Files, especially the Monster of the Week episodes, I would like Warehouse 13? I do, although it is a sci-fi show, so it has some of the cheesier... It has great actors. Like, it has CCH Pounder. I think that's her name, right? I'm not sure. Um, God... I hope I'm not going to... Are you saying some of the effects are a little dodgy? A little dodgy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A little bit of the... Of the yeah, of, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was watching an episode of the original Star Trek, and anytime they're under attack, I, I realized, oh, everybody's... They're just telling everybody, lean way over to this side. And then lean this way. And then they shake the camera to make it look like they're in bed, <laughs> and then lean this way. And the way everybody does it is just so hammy you know yet you still yeah i love, love it. it love it 
All right. Let us know what you've been watching, if there's any shows you recommend from the 90s or 2000s, because really there's been some great television over the years. All right. That's going to do it for today's episode of the After Buzz. Check us out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and listen to the regular Buzz Adams Morning Show Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 95.5 KLAQ. Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination.